Today we're going to run through a dissection of a bivalve. The type of bivalve we're using today is a freshwater American mussel. The first step of a dissection is to orient the organism. In order to do so, we're going to first locate the umbo. The umbo is the oldest portion of the shell. The umbo also indicates the dorsal end. Directly below it is the ventral end of the bivalve. Now looking back to the umbo, since it's closer to this end rather than to this end, this end is the anterior portion of the shell. And this end is the posterior portion of the bivalve. We're also going to look at some other key shell features. This outside area is the peristarchum. These lines are also known as growth lines. Close to the umbo over here is the outer hinge ligament. to open up the bivalve. In order to do so, we need to cut through the anterior and posterior abductor muscles. Stand the bivalve up. Notice the right half of the valve, the right valve, and the left valve. Right there, and directly across the other side, two circular looking muscles. Using a scissor, gently cut through these muscles. Be careful not to cut through to other internal structures. We're now going to take a look at the inside of the bivalve, the muscle here. After scrape, scraping away the abductor muscle, we're going to just take a look at the inside of the shell. Right here you see part of the mantle. Here are the abductor scars. And then we see the inside of the pearly knacker of the shelf. Right over here we see the foot. It's greatly reduced in preserved specimens. We're going to peel back using a scissor. We're going to cut away some of the mantle that's still stuck to the uh, inner. So we can see some of the internal, more of the internal features. Right here. Go back out. We have the posterior and the anterior. So here we have the posterior abductor muscle. And then right there we have the anterior abductor muscle. Foot, mantle on both sides, on both valves. Right here, we have the labial pout. And we have one set of gills, outer gill, inner gill. So we have labial pouts, gills. I'm going to stand up now, take a look inside, you see the other labial pout and the other set of gills. So now we're going to take a look for the mouth, following the gills, and then following the labial pouts from the anterior end to the posterior end. 
we're going to find them out right there. Using your blunt probe, you can just if you stick it in, you can feel inside the esophageal cavity. The next structure we're going to take a look at is the heart, which lies dorsally. I'm just going to break off this other valve, breaking through the internal hinge ligament. It's kind of tough. Ah, there we go. See the hinge ligaments right there? So in order to do so, we're just going to remove one of the gills, the outside gill. And under this thin little layer right here, you're going to find the heart. Heart's right there. There's a left and right auricle. Right now, only one is visible. And just remove a little bit here. Underneath are the kidneys. Here's the other oracle, so we have the heart. That lies beneath the gills. Now we're going to remove both sets of gills. Both parts of the set of gills. We're going to take a look at the inside of the visceral mass. After removing both parts of the gills, you can see right and removing the little layer of mantle that's covering the heart. You'll see the heart. There are two, here's the heart. There are two oracles. Above it lies the kidney and the digestive gland. I'm going to take a look at that in just a second. In order to do so, we're going to have to cut through the visceral mass. It helps if you detach it from the mantle, pretty much. Using a blade. You're going to cut ventral to dorsal. So if we take a look inside, right here, the screen, is the digestive gland. Here is the kidneys. And if you can see right here, there's a U-shaped feature. That is the crystalline style sac. And folded into here is the intestine, but Kind of difficult to see in preserved specimens. Mm -hmm.